Hi. Today I'd like to spend some time talking about the issue of anxiety. In particular, I want to address some passages from the book of Philippians, which many believe implies that any kind of anxiety a believer might have is inappropriate or a sign of weak faith or immaturity. In Philippians chapter 4, verse 6, we read, Do not be anxious about anything, but in everything by prayer and supplication with thanksgiving, let your requests be made known to God. And the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, will guard your hearts and minds in Christ Yeshua. Now, for the sake of this teaching, rather than me talk about what I believe this passage means, my focus will be on what this text does not mean and how it is not to be applied. Consider that sometimes when you may be teaching someone how to use a powerful instrument or device, such as a weapon, like a gun, one of the approaches you can take is to first tell the person how not to use it. You may tell them things they should not and must not do, and obviously, the reason you do this when it comes to a powerful or dangerous instrument is because you want to help keep the person from seriously, if not fatally, injuring themselves or others. Likewise, the word God can be thought of as a powerful, powerful instrument, like a knife. And it's important to know how not to handle this powerful instrument, such as texts, uh, as Philippians 4, verse 6 in order to avoid hurting or injuring people. So the, to reiterate, the purpose of this video, this teaching, is simply to help demonstrate what Philippians 4, 6 does not mean, and how you are not to apply to people who may struggle with anxiety, so that you might not unnecessarily harm such people who are already struggling and suffering in their condition. To quote the first part of Philippians 4, 6, Paul says, Do not be anxious about anything. Now, many people read this and conclude Paul is asserting that all forms of anxiety are wrong. And all, any type of prolonged stress and worry, unsettled feelings are condemned by this passage. And any attempt to justify such anxiety is just making excuses for sin. However, I would contend that Paul is not implying or teaching that at all. He's not asserting that all forms of anxiety are wrong. For example, consider Philippians 2.12, which is just two chapters before Philippians 4. In this passage, Paul actually calls the Philippians to be anxious, as we read, Wherefore, my beloved, as you have always obeyed, not as in my presence only, but now much more in my absence, work out your own salvation with fear and trembling. According to the Blue Letter Bible, the word trembling means fear and trembling, used to describe the anxiety of one who distrusts his ability completely to meet all requirements, but religiously does his utmost to fulfill his duty. And Paul appears to be calling the Philippians, to experience something of this anxiety in their life. Of course, Paul is not calling them to be anxious over losing their eternal life. For once you are born again and justified, you can never lose that standing before your Heavenly Father. I believe Paul is referring to something else. Consider that the word salvation can refer to deliverance. The context of Philippians 2 deals with the body of believers who needed deliverance from certain spiritual problems within their midst, in particular disunity. This is likely why in the beginning of chapter 2, Paul calls the church body to unity. They are to be like-minded, having the same love and be of one accord, of one mind. So when Paul calls this church to work out their salvation with fear and trembling, or anxiety, Paul seems to be referring to the need of the Philippians at Philippi to give much serious thought and be very concerned over the spiritual problems within the body. According to Paul, there is to be a holy, lawful anxiety among these believers. Or they have a preoccupation with seeking to fill their responsibilities before their Heavenly Father. By yielding to the Spirit, allowing themselves to be transformed by the renewing of their mind and to take action to be delivered from those problems in their midst, such as dissension and disunity. But the key is that this anxiety they were to have was a good anxiety. It tells believers being very concerned and fixated and passionate about the responsibilities before Christ. So the fact that Paul calls Christians to be anxious in Philippians 2.12 is evidence that Philippians 4.6 is not a prohibition against experiencing every kind of anxiety in one's life. And there's another reason why we know Paul is not condemning all forms of anxiety. That is because we know the human brain was designed to be anxious in certain situations in order to protect us. Whenever you are in real danger, a normal, healthy brain will trigger what is known as the fight-or-flight reflex, which is a physiological reaction, which ultimately is designed to prepare a person to fight or to flee in a dangerous situation. This reaction results in uh, chemicals secrete into your system, and you will become anxious. Your heart rate will increase. You will have increased blood flow to the muscles. Your senses will become more acute, and you will have more energy and be more prone to aggression. This is all done that you might be more fit to take appropriate action to help increase your chances of protecting yourself or others in a certain perilous situation. And you generally will not be able to relax and calm down until you know you have escaped such a situation. 
For example, imagine you're walking down an alley at night and you're jumped by a couple of people who are trying to do you serious harm. If your fight or flight reflex didn't occur and you just stood there, you might end up seriously harmed or dead. But if your brain is working correctly, that reflex will kick in and your brain will secrete certain chemicals into your system so that you'll be alarmed and anxious in order to enable you to take appropriate action to hopefully help you escape from that situation, whether it be to fight back or to attempt to flee. But know that this anxiety you feel is not some kind of spiritual weakness or disobedience to Christ. It's a lawful anxiety. It's lawful because it's by God's design. It helps you fulfill one of your responsibilities before, namely that you might seek to preserve your life and to escape and avoid harmful situations. Of course, there are times when it may be appropriate not to seek to preserve your life. And that's in regards to situations when preserving your life would require you to sin or disown Christ in some way. I'm not talking about those kinds of situations. I'm mainly speaking about how we simply are not to live a careless, reckless life. Where if we are in a dangerous situation, a life-threatening situation, we don't try to get too worked up over it. We just wrongly presume God is going to exert his miraculous power to protect us. That would be inappropriate presumption. The point is that by our Heavenly Father's design, there's a lawful anxiety that we may experience in certain situations. And it's an anxiety that we are not to feel ashamed or guilty about. It's something not to be repented of. So obviously Paul is not referring to such anxiety in Philippians 4, 6. In connection to what I just mentioned, Paul's words cannot be referring to anxiety disorders which tends to result in people obsessing over all sorts of troublesome things. What's very important to note is that the cause of an anxiety disorder is often not due to spiritual problems. Instead, it's largely due to a problem with a part of the brain called the amygdala, which is utilized in regulating your mood and controls the fight-or-flight reflex. I mentioned earlier about this reflex being triggered when you're in real danger. And it's the amygdala, when it's working normally, that triggers that reflex when you're in real danger. It will secrete stress chemicals through your body. The amygdala is basically like a radar system, which, when working properly, should alert you only to significant dangers. Consider that in the military, radar might detect enemy aircraft. They would likely not want to detect insects and birds, which generally won't pose much of a threat. But imagine if the radar was so incredibly sensitive and powerful, it did detect such things. That would result in four more blips on the screen and cause confusion and potentially distract from real enemies that pose real threats. This is similar to what occurs with the amygdala when someone has an anxiety disorder. The amygdala is in a state where it is hyperactive and ultimately becomes far too sensitive and begins to cause all these unnecessary blips and beeps in the person's mind and body. Instead of it only detecting real dangers, real aircraft as it were, the amygdala begins to detect all sorts of flies and birds. The reason is because the amygdala is stuck in a state where it thinks the person is in danger most if not all the time. This is what an anxiety disorder entails. This results in chemicals being secreted through the person's body, giving them anxious feelings, which can tend to lead to difficulties in that person relaxing and focusing on normal, healthy things. They can end up getting fixated and worried about all sorts of disturbing thoughts and ideas, feeling a great amount of fear of all kinds of things that generally will not phase people with non-anxious brains. When a person has a non-anxious brain, their brain will usually be able to properly handle many of those disturbing thoughts that pass through the mind of the anxious brain. Such, th such thoughts are what is known as a brain noise. Now, brain noise is something all normal brains experience. Brain noise can entail all sorts of weird and strange things, bizarre images and actions, thoughts and ideas, things that would, might, might even be incredibly inappropriate and sinful to say or do. And when such undesirable things pass into the mind of the non-anxious brain, the brain will generally not get fixated on it too much, but it will process it quickly and move on to something else. But when a person has a true anxiety disorder they, uh, and they have an anxious brain, their brain will tend to get stuck on certain kinds of brain noise. The brain gets stuck on such noise due to the amygdala being hyperactive. You might be familiar with that, uh, those rides in the amusement parks called the, uh, uh, called the Gravitron where it spins so fast that due to the centrifugal force, people end up getting pushed away from the center and they're forced against the side of the gravitron. There's so much force that people can um, pick up their feet off the ground, so it seems that they are sticking to the wall. They are actually sticking to the wall due to the centrifugal force. 
Well, likewise, human, the human mind, when it's hyperactive, there's basically a loop that goes on, and it's executing so fast, there is, as it were, a great spinning. And as a result, certain thoughts don't get processed correctly, and they can end up getting stuck to the forefront of the mind, the forefront of the brain. It can cause a person a lot of stress. What thoughts get stuck in the forefront of the brain will largely be related to certain underlying deep-seated values and fears the person might have. For example, if a person has a fear of germs, their anxious brain might get stuck on things related to cleanliness. And because such people with anxious brains can get fixated on such brain noise, they can develop things such as uh, uh, <coughs> obsessive compulsive disorder and other kinds of mental disorders and compulsion, which can be very difficult to battle and be very tormenting and make life incredibly difficult to handle, even causing massive tension in their relationships at times. Now, the reason I go into such detail about anxiety Disorders is to make clear that anxiety disorders are generally not the result of spiritual problems like prayerlessness and like a Bible reading or uh, unrepentant sin, which the believer has a measure of control over. Instead, the anxiety is due to a problem in the brain. The, the problem in the brain that causes anxiety is often the result of things happening in the believer's life which are totally outside of the believer's control. Studies have shown that many, if not men, most, mental disorders adults experience are due to abuse in that person's childhood, whether it be ver verbal, physical, emotional, sexual abuse. But also anxiety many adults deal with can develop due to traumatic experience they went through when they were older, the loss of a loved one, being the victims of uh, kind of abuse at work, in the home, or they may witness or observe some tr type of traumatic events, such as uh, something a soldier might experience in war, or maybe uh, they experience, uh, they witness a violent crime. And know what all these experiences I mentioned have in common is that they are often things that can be outside of the believer's control. In other words, people can tend to be victims of terribly intense, traumatic, painful experiences that can often inflict people, uh, that often can inflict people in this fallen, sinful world. All such painful experiences can be too intense and emotionally charged for the brain to properly handle and process, and this can result in, in an anxiety disorder where the brain gets stuck in a high anxiety state. Now, this is very important to keep in mind. When a person has a true anxiety disorder, it can sometimes be close to impossible for them to control and manage their thoughts. Yes, self-control is a fruit of the spirit. That does not mean a believer has the capacity to have total control over their mind and body during every waking hour of the day, whereby the exertion of their will, they will be able to stop their mind or body from engaging in any kind of destructive or painful behavior. The self-control we are to have as Christians is largely in regard to things we can control, not what we cannot control. This is why implementing Philippians 4.6 to be thankful and prayerful along with meditating on scripture is not necessarily going to make one's anxiety quickly dissipate. Please consider I have much experience in having terrible anxiety problems in my past. And one of the causes of that anxiety was a death in the family. It took a long time for me to get back to a relatively more normal state, even though I can still struggle at times. But I want to point out that I was one who had spent time studying and meditating and discussing the Bible. And I prayed regularly. Anxiety was not the result of an undisciplined thought life, as if I was just not just uh, as if I wasn't uh, focused on the Bible enough, and I wasn't laying my cares before the feet of Christ. Instead, my anxiety was connected to an, a hyperactive amygdala due to my brain not handling certain upsetting experiences that were outside of my control. My brain was just sending stress chemicals into my body, which led me to feel nervous and depressed. And note that I would feel nervous regardless of what I was thinking about. What many people don't understand is when you have a true anxiety disorder, you're often going to feel anxious regardless of what you focus your mind on. It's not always the case that having troubling thoughts makes you nervous. As if, and as if having positive thoughts will necessarily calm you down. <clears throat> Imagine shaking a bottle of carbonated water violently, then you turn the cap a bit, and some of the water begins to squirt out with great force out of the top of it. Obviously, the water spraying out of the top is not causing the disturbance in the bottle. Rather, it's the disturbance inside the bottle that caused the water to forcefully spray out of it. So it is when it comes to an anxiety disorder. Certain thoughts can aggravate your anxiety, but it's not as, as though having undisciplined, troubling thoughts is causing the disturbance of the disorder within. 
rather it's often the underlying disorder, the malfunctioning brain, that is causing the troubling intrusive thoughts to spray, as it were, into your mind. So since thoughts are but the effect and not the cause of the internal disorder, positive thoughts will not necessarily make you feel all better. A lot of all that I've said, the idea that is often based on Philippians 4, 6, that people with anxiety just need to trust in Christ and pray, and their anxiety will go away, is not sound advice and can end up frustrating Christians out there who are struggling very hard with their disorders. In fact, I understand that for those who have had anxiety and problems with intrusive thoughts, the act of prayer can potentially make the anxiety worse. Note that I'm not saying that you shouldn't pray. Do you have problems with obsessive thoughts due to a disorder? Praying about and against those troubling thoughts can actually further intensify the obsession about those thoughts and aggravate your condition. So the next time someone tells you they are anxious or nervous, please be very careful to not start immediately citing passages from the Bible, such as Philippians 4, 6, which may appear to condemn their condition. What you can be doing is actually adding to their anxiety and possibly contributing to them feel, to feel guilty and ashamed, frustrated, confused, irritated, and misunderstood. It may lead them to even question their spiritual state. If you, if you can convince a Christian that they must never be anxious, that Christian who has a disorder might find themselves regularly wondering why they can't relax. This may lead them to get very frustrated with themselves and even tempt them to get angry at their Heavenly Father. They may try to implement Philippians 4, 6 and pray and supplicate and be thankful, but find that they still don't have much peace within. But that lack of peace is not necessarily due to a weakness of faith or maturity or some flaw in the promise of Philippians 4, 6. Rather, but rather, that lack of peace may simply be the result of their malfunctioning brain and doing something outside of their control and sending stress chemicals into their system and making them feel nervous. Please be reminded of the weakness of human nature with all the disorders and struggles a person can have, and that sometimes there is no quick fix to such disorders. Again, as a reminder, their brain, the brain of the anxious person, could have been traumatized by all sorts of terrible experiences they went through in their past as a little child, in school, in their marriage, the military, you may have experienced things that are too, they're even too ashamed to tell you about. Be very careful to conclude you've got this anxious person pretty much figured out. They just need to follow Philippians 4, 6, and you'll begin to have peace. In closing, people who have a true anxiety disorder don't need to hear someone misapply texts such as Philippians 4, 6 in their life. Instead, they need prayer, they need love, compassion, sympathy, and they need to learn practical steps they might take to help cope with and if not eliminate their anxiety disorder. Thank you for listening. Please feel free to comment and ask any questions. I just ask that you communicate in a respectful way.